Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. My guest today is Kurt Baumgartner, a senior researcher in the Global Research and Analysis team. And Kurt is here today to talk about the rise of Java and Java exploits in exploit kits. Uh, we've seen in the past, you know, a lot of news around uh, Adobe Flash and Adobe Reader being the preferred target. But lately, Java has kind of bypassed uh, Adobe as the preferred target. Talk a little bit about what you're seeing in the course of your research around Java exploits. Java exploitation has been booming this year, mm -hmm. uh, in part because of its relation with various exploit packs, mm -hmm. in particular the Black Hole exploit pack, mm -hmm. which has been being it, which is being developed right now and modified. Um, the more recent versions that are associated with mass compromise and and search uh, search mm -hmm. image or search engine optimization mm -hmm. techniques. Um, uh, uses Java as the very first exploit that it delivers to the end user. Right. So in part, um, they do uh, include exploits for other technologies, right. but the first one to be delivered is always going to be Java. Why is that? Is it because you know patching on the desktop of Java is not as mainstream as maybe patching some of the other applications? Is it because it's Java exploits are easier to find and kind of copy and paste? Is it a combination of both? Why? Why? Why Java? It's a combination. So the patch cycle and the facilities on the mm -hmm. user's computer for patching Java is just not as easy. Not as robust. Not as yeah, robust right. as what Google Chrome is doing, mm -hmm. as what the Adobe products are doing. Um, the patch cycle itself is slow. Right. Um, quarterly. At best, right. it's quarterly. Um, it can be, or I shouldn't say at best, but right. there's a scheduled quarterly release. Mm -hmm. They usually stick to that. Um, and then and they're very slow to respond to like zero-day things as well. Right? Yes. Yeah, the team just is not as responsive as Adobe and Microsoft and the other groups. So a combination of those things make it much more lucrative to channel your exploits to that target. There are more victims that are more available mm -hmm. for a longer period of time. Uh, the, the other factor is that Java itself is a more reliable uh, uh, target for attack. Mm -hmm. So when you send down exploit code you, and you are attacking a, a workstation mm -hmm. you know is vulnerable, you're going to run your banking Much Trojan. As an mm -hmm. attacker, you really favor Java. Right. And these, these Java exploit kits or the use of Java exploits within exploit kits, what are some of the exploits? That are, what, what is the end result of these exploits? Is it usually identity theft type things, banking Trojans? What are you most likely seeing in, say, Black Hole or some of the other exploit kits you So on, on a lot of these free website hosting sites mm -hmm. where the attackers are hosting thousands of, of domains that uh, host uh, right. the Black Hole exploit pack, we'll see mostly SpyEye, uh, and other mm -hmm. banking Trojan variants. So it's financial data and mm -hmm. sensitive identity theft. So this is Trojan stuff. that sits on the machine and kind of collects and, and harvests banking, any sort of financial related data and uploads it to a remote server somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's what it's known for. Right. Yeah. Uh, what should the average end user be doing to protect themselves? Uh, besides, well, we, we spoke about you know, the Java patching process not being as robust. Is there anything you recommend for enterprises and consumers uh, to deal with this exponential growth, this kind of uh, rise in Java attacks? What should we delete Java from our machines? What? How do you? Well, what do you do? How, what do you recommend? I've I've seen and heard the advice. Just get rid of it if you don't need it. Right. But that's next to impossible. Java is prevalent. It's ubiquitous. Right. Um, lots of applications use Require, it. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of that's not a very useful statement mm -hmm. to say. Just don't use it. Um, some things you could do is look at the options within the update panel for Java, mm -hmm. and you could increase the, the, the number of requests it makes. Instead of you know, just once every month, you could make it daily. You, so, can, you mm -hmm. can ramp up the number of requests that Java makes to look for updates for right. its Right, so package. to check for updates, you should check more often that's, for updates. That's one thing you can do. Right. Yeah. Um, do, does Java opt into any of the uh, anti-exploit mitigations in, say, Windows, DEP, ASLR, any of that stuff? Is there something that we should be demanding from uh, Oracle Sun to, you know, make that product more hard, more hardened? As one of the most popular vendors out there, Oracle and uh, their Java implementation mm -hmm. has been one of the biggest laggards in uh, adopting ASLR, mm -hmm. DEP, 
safe SEH, mm -hmm. all sorts of compiling options that can really increase the safety of the software package. Right. It's not present in Java 6, although with the new release of Java 7, we, we do get DEP and okay. ASL, ASLR and other safety mechanisms. So they're slowly ramping up the, Sl those Very things. slow, uh, too slowly. Uh, yeah. Do you expect in this in the course of one two years from now things to get better, get worse, stay the you same? Know, do you, st you you still think a year from now we'll be having the same conversation? Unfortunately, I do. Uh, this past week, I was talking with one of the world's mm -hmm. best known Java researchers, mm -hmm. and he said he felt like a kid in a candy store. He said that the more you change, the more opportunity there is to break stuff, mm -hmm. and so he's. He enjoys his work, and unfortunately, he's enjoying this work with Java 7. That's depressing news. <laughs> thank you very much, Kurt. Right. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. You can see some additional webcasts at youtube.com slash Kaspersky.